Hi there. I am very excited today because I finally got my hands on The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. I have loved her books like crazy. Let me take off my glasses because it's very serious. I have been a huge fan of her novels for quite some time. I absolutely adored The Kiss Quotient when it first came out. I remember when I first heard um, the synopsis for it and the day of when it dropped, I ran to my local bookstore and bought it. And they had just freshly opened up the box and were just putting those books on the shelves. And I got it that day, read it in one night flat, loved the hell out of it. Then came The Bride's Test and there was a little controversy from some of the book bloggers that were reviewing it, but I remember it still being overall overall well liked. Still went and picked that up. Loved that one just as much as Kiss Quotient, if not even more. I think I love The Bride Test even more. I have this thing where books that are in a trilogy, I typically like like the middle book. I, I feel like the middle book kind of makes or breaks the series because obviously everyone looks forward to the final book. Whether it's an actual self-contained trilogy or it's like books that are connected in the same universe type deal, I always find like the middle book is the one I gravitate towards most. I found this with um, recently with um, the Brown Sisters trilogy from Talia Hibbert, which are huge in the romance book blogging world. If you love romance novels and you want easy romances to get into, Talia Hibbert is usually the author to go to. But this is not a Talia Hibbert video. But anyways, I just remembered that I absolutely love Helen Huang's writing style so much and I feel like she just has a really great pulse on writing really great romance. So The Heart Principle has finally come out. This is definitely my highly anticipated read for 2021. I knew this was the book I wanted to get my hands on. I was gifted a bunch of gift cards from the people I love and people that care about me and I knew that I was saving them up for a bunch of books and this book was definitely that. All that pre-ramble to say this video might be like a little bit of a vlog slash review depending on how fast I get through this today. I've had quite a few romance books and books in general that I've picked up that I have lost interest in or for whatever reason I just can't seem to plow through. So I was on a really good hot streak as far as reading and then I kind of tapered off. So. Now that I have a highly anticipated read on my hands, I'm gonna give it a shot. I've heard that this book in particular from Helen is a little bit more on the woman's fiction end versus just a straight romance or rom-com. I hear it's a lot less of a rom-com style book and it definitely deals with a lot more emotional gravitas. Not that romances can't have really emotional pressure points in the narrative, I've talked about that before, but this definitely is gonna have a lot more of a series of a tone. So we'll see how I find it. But yes, I am so excited. Hello, I am back with uh, my review for The Heart Principle. I thought this was gonna be like a fragmented uh, vlog, but I guess not. I just read through this entire book after I filmed the first initial clip and it's the next day and I just finished it and I'm really happy that I did. I would still say out of the three novels that Helen's released, The Bride Test is still my favorite. This book in particular has a lot more darker and harder subject matter to get through, but I still appreciate it and I believe Helen is gonna become an auto-buy author personally because Every single one of her novels, I have read through them quickly. I've been quickly encaptured into her storytelling, and I really believe that she has a really great gift. I've enjoyed all of her books so much, and this one definitely is a departure from the other two, yet her writing style is still strong, and I still enjoy every word. Our principal stars Anna Sun. She's a violinist, extremely talented at what she does. She has a video of her playing go viral on YouTube, hundreds of millions of views, and she gains a lot of opportunity from it. She gets contacted by a really famous 
artist and she's to tour with them and she's to create um, like a new song. She's just extremely talented and she feels the weight and pressure of this so much. So much so that she's found herself in a creative block, so to speak. So the piece of music that she's working on, despite the amount of time she practices, she just cannot seem to get it right. And it's slowly wearing down her self-esteem and her, her abilities as a musician and as a creative. And it's come to a point where it's really affecting her in her day-to-day -day life. Amidst all of this, she's also in therapy to help her with this creative block. And it's through therapy that her therapist diagnoses her on being on the spectrum of autism, which shakes her, found her foundation, but also it's relieving to her because it makes sense to her past actions and how she finds how she doesn't really relate to her family and some of the behaviors that she couldn't quite explain to others. Everything kind of clicks into place and makes sense for her now. But in her mind, it also creates an entire new slew of complications because of having to break down this diagnosis to her family, even though there's so many people, so many different walks of life that are diagnosed with being on the spectrum and still are in high pressure situ job situations and are able to have a quality of life. With her family, she knows that it will present itself with challenges and she finds that she might not be able to get them to understand her and really appreciate her for who she is. In the midst is. of all this, Anna meets Quan, who we've met in Helen's previous novels, The Kiss Quotient and The Bride Test. So Quan really gets his time to shine in this book. Let me tell you, he was the perfect leading man. He has his own traumas he has to deal with as well. He was recently diagnosed with cancer and had to go for surgery for it. He's in remission, doing relatively well physically, but mentally it has definitely taken a toll on him. And he's not the player swagger-like character that we've met previously like definitely in the kiss quotient you got the sense that he was a player you know going through women and just basically being a playboy on the town he definitely takes time to reflect and it's definitely hampered on his self-esteem as well and anytime you have surgery and physically you look different there is a form of disassociation from that and he really goes into that detail in his own POV. So with Quan, I think he was in third person, but Helen made the choice of doing first person definitely for Anna's character because it definitely has a semi-autobiographical element to it, um, which you come to learn in the author's note that Helen provides, which I, I think is really appropriate to read. I think you shouldn't skip over it. It really dwells into her, her psyche and what she had to go through. Um, she was caretaking for her mom who was diagnosed with CA and she goes over just how difficult of a process being a caregiver is and how that caregiver burnout is real. Anyways, going back to the romance, the two of them hit it off really well, and despite there being awkwardness between them, and the awkwardness meaning like being intimate, because both of them have their own personal struggles with Anna, it has to be done in a certain way, and she's very particular, and, you know, converse frank conversations about intercourse can be really uncomfortable, but I just found that their communication style was so effective and so open, and it just made you root for the characters even more so. They're able to be vulnerable and compassionate with one another, and it just makes you as a reader root for them even more so. And then in the midst of them finding their rhythm to, together and falling in love and enjoying each other's quirks and generally seeing them become better people being with each other and helping each other. Uh, Anna's father has a medical emergency. He ends up having a stroke. And 
the unfortunate thing with him having stroke was that his mother ignored, her mother ignored the signs and symptoms and just asked him to sleep it off, which in a case of CVA is, can be very detrimental. It's highly, highly critical that in a certain time frame that you get medical treatment. And because he didn't get this medical treatment right away, he has diminished um, sensation. He has cognitive issues now and con he's in cognitive decline, has issues with swallowing and is paralyzed on one side of his body. Which brings us into the darker, heavier material of the novel and then Anna having to play the role of a caretaker, which you really get to see a lot of the rawness of what Helen was dealing with in her own personal life. You really felt that through the character and her and Quan, despite these um, challenges and obstacles, they still are able to have this really, really beautiful and resonant love story. And I just, I just felt so many things while reading this. I just can't give Helen enough credit. I am so happy that she was able to complete this novel despite what was going on in her personal life in the midst of creating it. And I just think it's worth the read. It is a departure from the other two novels, I won't lie. And I do think that it's more in the category of contemporary romance, even stronger still in women's fiction versus a rom-com. But I love the weight that this book gave to the characters. And I love that not everything tied up in a perfect bow. There's a lot of familiar problems in Anna's son's side. And I'm glad that it all didn't wrap up. She particularly had a lot of conflicts with her sister. And I just felt so bad for that character that there's times where I just literally want to reach through the pages and hug her. Because I felt for her so much. But in the end, it still has a HEA. And I really appreciate that it gives you a sense of hope while still being really real in its rawness and the uncomfortable conversations that have to be had. And you just root for Anna all the way through. And Quan, like I said, could not be more perfect. So I am giving it a really resounding, really enthusiastic thumbs up, five stars. I don't even sound like I'm making any damn sense, but it's because it's first thing in the morning, but I wanted to make this video while my thoughts were still fresh instead of having to write out a script. The book is good. I enjoyed it. Quick read. Helen never lets me down. She's got me like this in my reading life, so I'm so appreciative of it. I would highly recommend checking it out. I think it's a good read, especially someone if you dealing with um, having to be a caregiver in any capacity, working in the healthcare industry and the healthcare industry and having to deal with the effects of just compassion burnout and caregiver burnout. It, it's just a worthwhile read. And if you want to read a really sweet romance that is real and honest and has uncomfortable conversations about intimacy and, have, and being there for your partner and actually listening, it's for you. That's my review. Thank you. See you in the next video. Peace.